Hello. It's good to see you. Today, we are going to be making eggnog bread. Eggnog bread. Now, I have to admit to you, I have never in my life tried eggnog. Not even one single time have I ever tried it. But this is a recipe that, uh, it, it looks like a simple little quick bread. The ingredients are very simple. I think anybody can make this. It's just a few steps um, and, and eggnog. And I found this cute little bottle. Who goes around chugging eggnog like this? Some of y'all might be looking at that going, oh, I need that. I, I found this at Walmart in the dairy section. Of course, they had larger containers of eggnog. Um, I just bought this because I don't need a lot for this recipe. You need less than a cup for this recipe. Now, this recipe does make just one loaf of bread. It's not going to be like huge or anything. It's going to be this size right here. But I think you could very easily double it or triple it or, you know, whatever you wanted to do. And it would be perfect for any gathering for Thanksgiving or Christmas or or just whatever, just want to have it to, you know, make it to have at home, you could do that too. And I'm going to try some of this before we leave this little moment here because I kind of feel like I, you know, I need to actually try eggnog before I try it in a bread. So I'm going to, uh, ugh, I'm, go I'm going to give this a try. Oh my Lord. This container, this is four servings. This, this little bottle is four servings. Goodness gracious. We won't discuss the nutrition. Info. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Don't worry about it. Don't look at it. Whew. I'm going to take just a little juice glass and just I'm just going to try a little taste of it. Um, I'm not a big fan of stuff like this, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to try it. And I will put a link to this in the description. This, yeah, this is a super simple little recipe that anybody could do. If you've never baked before, this could be a great thing to start with. And like if you have to make something to take to an event, you can make this and then, you know, you can tell everybody you made this bread from scratch because you will be making it from scratch. But don't be afraid of making stuff from scratch. I think a lot, it can be kind of intimidating to think about doing that. It's really not that hard, honestly. It's not. Mixes are great. You know, like box mixes are wonderful. I use them all the time. But making stuff from scratch, is not, it's not hard. This is not hard anyway. This is a very simple little thing here. And it would also make a good gift. You know, like if you make it and you really like it, you could make it for other people as a gift. The ingredients are not, it's not expensive stuff. So we have ingredients for the bread and for the, there's going to be an eggnog glaze over top of the bread. So you're going to need eggnog for the bread and the glaze on top. So you're going to need one and a half cups of flour, and I'll put the um, I'll put the recipe in the description too. A cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder. For my baking powder, I'm just using Rumford aluminum-free baking powder. This is just the one my mom always used, so it doesn't matter. You need a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I have my stone mill ground cinnamon here from Aldi. You need a quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I have my cute little McCormick ground nutmeg. You will need three quarters of a cup of eggnog for the bread itself. Uh, and you need a half a cup of either vegetable oil or canola oil. You don't need any butter for this recipe. So I have here, this is, um, what is this? Well, it's not very fancy at all. This is just vegetable oil by Lidl. This will work just fine. Or canola oil, doesn't matter. Um, you need two large eggs. Got some eggs here. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. I have stone mill vanilla extract from Aldi. You also need a half a teaspoon of rum extract. And I found this at Walmart. I had to go to several stores to find rum extract, but I finally found it at Walmart. Now for the eggnog glaze, you need a cup of powdered sugar. I think I can get a cup out of there. I have a little bit left from other recipes. Three tablespoons of your eggnog, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, 
quarter teaspoon of rum extract and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now all of that's going into your glaze. So, and then we'll get into the steps of actually um, making it. And it, it looks really simple, just follow along and I will show you how easy this is. I like to do easy recipes for people who, who've never maybe baked or cooked before. And if it seems a little scary, don't be scared. It's not, it's not hard at all. The wonderful thing about recipes is they tell you step by step exactly what to do. So you don't have to guess or try to figure it out. You can, uh, it's going to tell you exactly what to do. So you know what to do and I'm going to show you what to do. So I'm going to crack this eggnog open. I'll pour a little bit in a glass and, uh, oh, it's got specks in it. It, I don't really know anything about eggnog. I'll be honest with you. Um, I've never consumed this product and it's very thick and it has spots in it. It's like a disease. I'm, I'm going to pour this in a little glass and we'll try it. Okay. I have cracked it open. It smells weird. I don't know if it's gone bad or not. I mean, it says here it's good till December 3rd, so I'm gonna have to take their word for it. What does that smell like? It almost, it smells like cake batter. That's what it, it kind of smells like cake batter of some sort. Okay, I decided to get fancy. I found this little glass in the, in the cabinet over there. You know, I have, um, I have, none of my glasses match. They're, they're all over the place. And I found this fancy, I'm assuming it's like a little juice glass or, I, I have no idea. Okay. I don't, ugh. okay. Oh my Lord, it's like cough syrup. It's so thick. Oh, it's coating the glass. Look at that. I don't want any more than that. Oh God, I'm scared. It smells, I, th I feel like I'm getting ready to drink cake batter. Ugh. I don't feel well. Okay. I'm taking a little sip of this. I don't want to, ugh. ugh. That tastes like banana pudding mixed with cake batter. I feel all kinds of ways about that. It's like, it tastes, why does it taste like bananas? Has it gone bad? What is in this stuff? Okay, it's non-alcoholic. It contains milk, high fructose corn syrup, cream, egg yolk, whey corn, whey, cornstarch, guar gum, salt, nutmeg, carrot, carrot, something I don't know, natural and artificial flavor, turmeric and, and, and not, and not, oh, non-fat milk. It tastes like banana pudding. It kind of smells like, it smells like fake banana flavoring. Oh my Lord. It's very sweet. It's very sweet. It's sweet. Ugh. I don't, I don't think I like it. I mean, well, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. It just, ugh, it's a roller coaster of taste. It's very thick, very sweet. I will add that to my list of things I will consume to be polite. You know, those that you have foods and things that you will eat to be polite. I would, I would drink that to be polite, but I wouldn't drink much of it. I would sip it for a very long time. I would not want to drink a lot of that. It's, uh, it's, it's rich. It's quite rich. Anyway, we're going to put some of this in our bread and we're going to put it on the glaze. So let's go ahead and get started and I will show you how to make eggnog bread. Okay, we now have all of our stuff together and we're going to start combining our ingredients. But first, I have to show you my bowls. Look at that. This is a set of four mixing bowls. 
They're made of melamine. It's like a nice plasticky material. Look at that. And they're also colorful. These bowls are from Zach Design, which you, well, it's on the bottom of each bowl. Z-A-K exclamation point. I found these at an antique store, but they're not antiques. I've seen these online and in other stores, um, and actually on Amazon, you can get these in different colors. You can get different combinations of colors for these. They're just fun little mixing bowls. I always like to show them to you. Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. Now for this recipe, um, we're going to be using these two right here to, because we're going to have the large bowl for the dry ingredients and the smaller one for the, the wet ingredients. So, I don't know, we, we don't often use, I don't, I think I've only used this one a few times. So I don't think we're gonna need these two. And then you want to have, um, you want to take an eight and a half by four and a half inch loaf pan. This one is nine inches by five, I think it'll work. And you want to spray the inside of it with cooking spray, which I have done here. I just happen to have some of this Carlini Original Canola Oil Spray. Just a cooking spray that I purchased at Aldi. This is just the one I had in there. So I just sprayed it, the inside of the loaf pan, with this here. And then you want to just set that aside for right now. Okay, so it says now. You want to whisk together the flour, sugar, salt, baking powder, cinnamon, and nutmeg in a large bowl. So that's what we're going to do. Here we have the flour. That is one and a half cups of flour. And we have one cup of sugar. And then we want to do our salt. Have a little bit of salt here. I'm just going to kind of shake it over the top. And we're going to be whisking all this together. Salt. Baking powder. Put that here. Shake that over the top. Now remember, baking powder and baking soda are not the same thing. You want to make sure if it calls for baking powder that you use baking powder. That was a mistake I made when I first started trying to cook anything because I never knew, I never learned how to cook anything growing up. And I thought baking powder and baking soda were the same thing. <laughs> They're not. It can ruin your recipe. Okay, baking powder. And then we have our cinnamon here. Put the cinnamon in. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> So we have our cinnamon, and then we put in the nutmeg. Okay. So, now, I'm going to take a whisk. I have my little plastic whisk from Dollar Tree. These work great. And we're just whisking together the dry ingredients. For now, we're done with this bowl and we need to move to the smaller one. So in a separate medium bowl, hopefully that's medium enough, you want to combine the eggnog, oil, eggs, vanilla extract, and the rum extract. Okay, so eggnog, my eggnog here. I swear it still smells like bananas. Eggnog. And then we have our vegetable oil. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it's like it's cracked. Vegetable oil. Okay. Eggs. Now the eggs, you have two eggs, but they have to be lightly beaten, so I don't get to go blue, blue, but I just have to kind of go 
bloop. <laughs> they, it, the recipe does say that the, the two eggs should be lightly beaten. Eggs. Here we have our vanilla extract. And our rum extract. There. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of stir these together a little bit. That's a strange combination of stuff. It doesn't want to stir very well. <laughs> it doesn't want to combine. Oh, you can definitely smell the rum extract. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is slowly add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and stir until combined. Slowly add the wet ingredients. I'm going to just put a little bit in there. A little. You can stir it with whatever you want to. I grabbed this out of the drawer first. That's how I decided to use it. You could stir it with a power drill if you like. You could stir it with your neighbor's cat. It doesn't matter. If it gets the job done, that's the right thing to do. Consistency better. Look at that. That's nice. It smells pretty good. Okay, so next step we want to pour the batter into the prepared loaf pan. And I did spray the inside of this with cooking spray. The next step listed here is that you need to pound on the counter <laughs> so that the loaf cake is easily set, is evenly set in the pan. Pound this on the counter. You can pound on the counter when you're done cooking if you want. I mean, that's up to you. <laughs> it's your counter. But let's finish this first. So I'm not going to do it right now because it's very loud. But you want to just take it and kind of, you know, sort of tap it 
firmly on the counter. Okay, I have now done that. <laughs> so we want to bake this for 65 to 70 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So let's go ahead and bake this and then we'll see how it looks when we come back. All right, we have finished the bread. Look at that. It is absolutely beautiful and as pretty as it looks, it smells even better. Oh my gosh, I want a candle that smells like this bread. It is so, oh my word. It is, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I love it. So what we're going to do now is um, put this, we're going to take this out of the, out of the little dish here. Now this was in a glass baking dish and it ended up taking just over an hour maybe an hour. It was about 65 minutes to bake this in this glass dish. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take it out of the little pan, the little loaf pan, and I'm gonna put it on this rack to cool. And while it cools, we're going to go ahead and make the glaze to go on here. Well, I did it. Look, I got it on there. I was so proud of myself. Look at just, my hands are clean. Look, it just popped right out. Yeah. It's not burnt. It is it is lovely brown, but it's not burnt. And I cannot tell you how good this smells. Oh my gosh. Ooh, <laughs> it smells so good. So while this finishes cooling, we're going to take our, our medium bowl again. And we're going to use this to make the glaze. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the powdered sugar. Got your powdered sugar here. You want to whisk together the powdered sugar, eggnog, vanilla extract, rum extract, and nutmeg. So here we have the eggnog. There. And vanilla extract. And the rum extract. And our nutmeg. There. So we're going to whisk this together. It's actually not too bad. Look at that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer this loaf to a plate. Okay, this is kind of silly. I realize this is a serving plate. This is a, a pure one <laughs> little serving tray. I have two of these. But I thought it would work for this. Like, I'm just going to... Look, it's the perfect size. Well, you have plenty of room over here. It's eggnog loaf shaped. So, I wanted to just put it on that. So, then I'm supposed to just uh, drizzle this over the top. I'm not really sure the best way to do that. doing this correctly. I do not care. Look at that. It's totally covered. Well, sort of, kind of covered ish look at it it's beautiful okay i'm gonna let this cool just a little bit more and then we can cut into it and try it okay we are ready to try 
our beautiful eggnog bread made from scratch. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It, it smells, oh, it smells so good. You can smell the nutmeg and the cinnamon and that rum extract and the vanilla. Oh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh. Mm. And the smell of fresh baked bread is always so nice. So I'm going to go ahead and cut into this. I'm going to just get a piece here and we're going to try it. Okay, that end piece looked a little crunchy, so I just went ahead and cut a little bit more beyond the end piece. Look, look at that. Oh my gosh. Does that look good? Wow. I'm going to try a bit here that has some of the glaze on it. It's, it's a beautiful bread. Oh, and it smells so good. That almost tastes like banana bread. It tastes a little bit like banana bread. It's, it's delicious. Look at that. Mm. Oh, wow. That is wonderful. It's not super sweet. This is not like a, a super duper sweet. It's not like cake. But the texture, the texture of it is really nice. Mm, it's very soft. Very good. And as you can see, it was very simple to make. Not a lot of crazy ingredients or, you know, no fancy techniques to make it. You just mix it all together and put it put it in a little pan and, and bake it. This is like some of that crunchy crust part. Mmm. That is so good. I wasn't really sure if I was going to like this. I know I always say that, but... I, okay, I really wasn't crazy about the eggnog, and again, it's the kind of thing I would, I would drink some to be polite, but I would not ride two on a mule anywhere to get it, but this is really good. The eggnog taste in here to me is not super strong, but it does seem to kind of add something to it. It adds like a little bit of a creaminess to it or something. It really does add something to the flavor of this bread. It's delicious. Mm. And I can definitely see where that would be a nice little thing to, you know, like you could take this recipe and double it or triple it and make multiple loaves of it and give it away. You could even leave the glaze off if you wanted to. I think it would be fine with the glaze or without. But it's just beautiful. Look at that. It's a beautiful little loaf of bread. Isn't it nice? It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's it's really good. You could glaze it or leave it unglazed. And it's it's fantastic. It would be good for Christmas time or if you have any get-togethers, Thanksgiving. I've been able to find eggnog with no trouble. Now, I was going to make it a couple of weeks ago, but I couldn't find eggnog anywhere. But now it seems to be everywhere. So, um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's great. And this is coming from somebody who really didn't think eggnog was that good. <laughs> so even if you don't like eggnog, give it a try. It's so good and it is so simple and it would be a fun little thing to take to any get together or to just have at home one night, just a nice chilly evening and you just cozy up by the fire and have some eggnog bread. Hmm? It was fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed getting to see this lovely loaf of eggnog bread come into being. It was absolutely wonderful. Oh my goodness. It's, it is so easy to make and it is so good. Wow. Mm, 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 mm. And thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a fantastic day and I'll see you again soon.